Welcome to our episode of the China Briefing. Today, we've got a mixed bag of news and insights coming out of China that's sure to keep your curiosity piqued. First up, top China scholar Li Cheng shares his perspective on the enduring tensions between the US and China, predicting that this friction is here to stay for the long haul. He dives into the complexities of US-China relations, the potential hotspots for conflict, and offers his take on recent developments in Chinese politics and the resilience of Hong Kong amidst economic and political challenges. In the economic sphere, China's central bank is making moves to bolster the yuan, sending a strong message against further devaluation. Meanwhile, Beijing is stepping up its tech independence game by phasing out Intel and AMD chips from government computers. And over in the currency markets, the Australian dollar is feeling the heat with record short bets amid growing concerns over China's economic outlook. On the hospitality front, the Peninsula's CEO is on a mission to revamp the luxury hotel's image and navigate through the ongoing challenges faced by Hong Kong's tourism sector. Lastly, in the world of finance and investment, TPG is dialing back its China investments in its new $5 billion Asia fund, reflecting a broader trend of diversification away from China among global asset managers. And as the US-China geopolitical tensions continue to simmer, Hong Kong's once thriving banking sector is feeling the squeeze, with many finance professionals facing uncertain futures. But it's not all doom and gloom, as we also take a look at the shifting dynamics in global central banking and what it means for investors in the region. So, Buckle up and stay tuned for all the details on these stories and more. Please continue watching for detailed coverage. Top China scholar says US tensions will be with us for a long time. South China Morning Post Li Cheng, political scientist and founding director of the University of Hong Kong Center on Contemporary China and the World, recently gave an interview discussing US-China relations, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Chinese politics. He believes that U.S.-China relations have deteriorated since 2017, with the U.S. increasingly viewing China as a major threat. Li argues that the structural problem lies in China's comprehensive challenge to the U.S. in terms of its economic, military, science and technology, and ideological power. He also suggests that the rise of China's middle class has created a structural problem, as many Americans feel that China's progress has come at the expense of the US working class. Li believes that the risk of conflict is highest in the South China Sea, but acknowledges that there is a lot of uncertainty, especially with regards to the US elections and the possibility of Trump being re-elected. He argues that China's approach to global conflicts, such as the conflicts in the Middle East and Europe, has been focused on portraying itself as a constructive force for stability and peace. However, this narrative is viewed cynically by Western countries, while countries in the global South see China as playing an important role. Regarding Chinese politics, Li suggests that the recent removal of ministers Qin Gang and Li Shengfu does not reflect negatively on President Xi Jinping's leadership. He believes that Xi's decision to remove them was decisive and reduced any potential damage. Finally, Li argues that Hong Kong still has many strengths, such as its cosmopolitan nature, its status as a major financial center, and its strong universities. He believes that Hong Kong will rebound from its recent economic and political difficulties. Yuan rebounds as PBOC sends strong message of support via fixing. Bloomberg China's central bank has given a clear signal that it will not let the yuan weaken further by setting a stronger-than-expected daily reference rate on Monday. The move follows concerns of a devaluation of the currency after last week's fixing suggested officials were open to depreciation. Analysts believe that the People's Bank of China's signal is aimed at correcting the perception that it wants to weaken the yuan and suggests that efforts to maintain stability this year will continue. China blocks use of Intel and AMD chips in government computers. Nikkei Asia China has introduced new guidelines that will mean U.S. microprocessors from Intel and AMD are phased out of government PCs and servers, as Beijing ramps up a campaign to replace foreign technology with homegrown solutions. Speculators catapult Aussie short bets to record amid China woes. Bloomberg Investors have increased their bearish bets on the Australian dollar to the highest level on record, 
due to concerns about the Chinese economy. The Australian dollar is considered a proxy for China sentiment, and as worries increase about the state of the Chinese economy, investors are becoming increasingly pessimistic about the Australian dollar. Goldman Sachs strategists believe that it may take some time before the Australian dollar starts to react normally, due to its close correlation with China and the concerns surrounding the Chinese economy. The peninsula sees recovery for luxury hotels as CEO fixes negative perception. South China Morning Post. Hong Kong's hospitality sector is expected to face continued challenges as tourist arrivals struggle to return to pre-pandemic levels, according to Hong Kong and Shanghai Hotels. The company, which owns the Peninsula Hotels, says that international travelers from the US and Europe to Hong Kong and mainland China remain low due to negative perceptions and issues such as trade wars and geopolitical conflicts. The city's hotel industry enjoyed some recovery last year as COVID-19 travel restrictions eased, but occupancy rates are still below levels seen before the social unrest in 2019. TPG will halve China investments in new $5 billion Asia fund. Bloomberg. Investment firm TPG is set to reduce its allocation to China in its eighth Asia buyout fund, with the portfolio expected to allocate just 10% to China down from 25% in previous funds. Instead, TPG plans to allocate over 80% of the fund to Australia, India, and Southeast Asia, with the remainder going to South Korea. The move comes as other asset managers, including Carlyle Group and Warburg Pincus, diversify away from China due to concerns over economic growth and escalating political tensions with the US. TPG's exposure to China through the new fund is likely to be among the lowest for global asset managers. Once high-flying bankers in Hong Kong become a lost generation. Bloomberg. The US-China geopolitical tensions and President Xi Jinping's push for data security and financial market regulation have fractured capital markets and caused a decline in Hong Kong's role as an international financial center. The number of finance professionals looking for jobs in Hong Kong is increasing, with many struggling to find work. The number of people licensed with the Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission has dropped, and IPO fundraising in Hong Kong fell by 56% last year. Private equity and venture capital investors have also been affected. The slowdown in financial services activity is likely to weigh on Hong Kong's economy which accounted for about 23% of gross domestic product in 2022. Bankers should prepare for a minimum 20% drop in compensation, and some may experience extreme reductions. Some bankers are making lifestyle adjustments, trimming expenses, and re-evaluating their self-worth. However, not everyone believes that Hong Kong's best days are over, and the government has introduced a talent pass to attract more people to the city. Morning bid, central bank sensitive shares face week of data. Yahoo! Asian investors may be cautious ahead of several key economic indicators this week, while the Japanese stock market has hit consecutive record highs and many centers, including China, have market closures on Friday. The Bank of Japan has ended its yield curve control and negative interest rate policy, while the US Federal Reserve the Swiss National Bank and the Bank of England have also signaled dovish monetary policies. However, the region's currencies were hit by a fall in China's yuan on Friday and the sell-off may continue on Monday. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.